Yeah, so uh, I just want to tell you how much I love training camp. Um, I think it's great. It gets us mentally prepared, physically prepared, um, just ready for the season. I love the grind. I, you know, I love everything about it. Not really. Really hate training camp with a passion. I hate getting up early in the morning. I hate going to sleep late. I hate it all. I hate going, getting in my shoulder pads, grinding for like eight hours, then having to go back out there. I hate the whole idea of training camp. I hate it. I hate I can't go home and lay in my own bed. I got to look at my teammates all day without getting a break. <laughs> training camp is terrible. It's terrible. I hate it. I mean, I understand why we do it, but I don't like a day, a second, a minute, any of it, any of it. If we can go without training camp, that actually I'll steal some years of my life and I think everything will be better for me. <laughs> All right, man, I, I give Melvin Gordon credit. That's about as candid as you're going to get. For the record, I love training camp. Uh, I also don't get hit. This is Inside Training Camp Live, presented to you by Mitsubishi Motors. Melvin Gordon last year had a bust-out season. Some people thought he was, I don't want to say bust, but a disappointment year number one. But coming off major knee surgery, he was back, he was healthy, he was in the end zone, and he had nearly 1,000 yards, but he did get 1,400 from scrimmage. And now Melvin Gordon is a member of the... L.A. Chargers. He and Philip Rivers and company have moved up the road to Costa Mesa, California, where along with um, Joey Bosa, they were on the practice field today for the very first time in their new home. Let's get back to Melvin Gordon. Alex Flanagan tracked him down. All right, having a little fun out here with running back Melvin Gordon after day one of practice is finally in the books. I appreciate the look right now. Who has better style, you or Joey Bosa? <laughs> Probably Bosa right now. I don't know. You know, some people might not like the short shorts. You know, I got this from Danny Woodhead, so right. you know, I appreciate him for that. The, uh, the short shorts, I hardly noticed. I'm looking at the short shirt. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, I just, you know, I'm a little old school when I how I dress, man. So you know, it's just what it is. How, do you cut that yourself? Uh, yeah, I cut it. I just don't like my shirts being like super tight around me. You know, I like to breathe a little bit. On game day, I wear a full shirt, but, you know, in practice, I like to breathe a little bit. Give me your evaluation, day one now in the books. Yeah, just a little rusty. You know, just a little rusty, like I said before. You know, it was the first day. Um, it's expected. It's expected, you know, but, you know, we have a long time before we play Denver uh, for our first game. Um, you know, so we have a lot of room for improvement. Bosa talked earlier today just saying that the level of competition feels a little bit different this year compared to last year. Is that true for you? Yes, you know, they, they definitely preach competition. You know, that's been the, one of the main focuses this year is competition, competition. Seen earlier, you know, they, we made a big crowd and coach called out a couple of players like, okay, y'all got to go get it, you know. So that's just what we, you know, that's what we need to build on. Um, so come, uh, so come uh, the game on Sunday, you know, that's just second nature to us. Seems like some of the personnel moves they've made indicate that they're going to feature the run game more. I mean, they bring in a left tackle that's really good at the run game. Is that the sense you're getting as well? Uh, yes, ma'am. But, you know, you know, our sense is to be balanced. You know, we don't want to be run heavy, too run heavy, which I would love, but we don't want to be too run heavy or too pass heavy. You know, we want to be balanced. You know, obviously, you know, they got me, you know, they picked up some offensive linemen, like you said, but we also got some, you know, a, amazing combo with, with the tight ends, receivers, uh, and we got Phil, you know, uh, you know, future Hall of Famer. So, um, you know, we're going to pass the ball. We're definitely going to do that. But I, I want to be balanced because that's how you win. Phillip seemed really excited, said he had some nerves today coming out here. But he said what he can tell about this team after day one is that you guys have the right people in the right places. Yeah, yes, ma'am. You know, we definitely had the right pieces. We have the right pieces to the puzzle. You know, it's just about putting it together. You have to stop calling me ma'am. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, Melvin. Good to talk to you. Thank you for your time. appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Like Melvin Gordon, there he is with Alex Flanagan today on the practice field. I'm Andrew Siciliano with Didi Kinkabuala is with me. Brian Billick joins us as well on Inside Training Camp Live. Brian, the Chargers are kind of uh, the in vogue pick here. I think in a lot of people's eyes after they hired Anthony Lynn and some of the offseason additions, that was assuming Mike Williams would play. But they've missed the playoffs in back-to-back -back seasons, only one trip to the postseason in seven years, 10-plus losses in each of the last two years. Brian, what am I missing here? Well, I think a lot of the optimism may indeed come from the fact that division's going to have a little flux in it. Certainly Oakland's going to be continue to be good, getting De uh, Derek Carr back. 
you got to know that in, in Denver, there's going to be a little bit of transition, some question about the quarterback position. Kansas City seems to, even though they're an often good football team, won the division last year, some questions about how much they really upgraded from last year. So there's no reason to think that San Diego, and you're right about the coaching, the best off or uh, off-season acquisition. They've got two outstanding coordinators in Gus Bradley and Ken Wisenhut. Ken Wisenhut coming back, obviously, to where there's a familiarity with Philip Rivers. You start with the Philip Rivers. You have a Melvin Gordon. They've got a lot of reasons to be optimistic. I will say this, though. The transition that they're going through right now, no team has uh, finished above 500 when they've had to come into a move like uh, uh, San Diego slash now Los Angeles. And this is really killing me because I'm just now getting used to calling the Rams the St. Louis Rams. i got to go back to calling them the Los Angeles Rams. I don't know if I can. I'm from L.A., so this is hard for me. But the Chargers could be a surprise team, but I tell you what, the everything about the transition of the offseason and what they're dealing with right now, that's a concern for me. Yeah, it is rough, and the Rams went through it last year, and they moved all around Southern California, whether it was Thousand Oaks or whether it was Irvine for camp or whether it was the Coliseum, uh, Agora for business offices. They were all over the map, and obviously that showed on the field a bit as well. The Chargers are going to have some guys actually driving home to San Diego because it is drivable. Granted, it is a horrible commute to go back and forth. They've relocated, but they've relocated only halfway back up the road to L.A. to be in Orange County. All right. LaDainian Tomlinson didn't relocate. He went back home recently, went back to camp with the Chargers and visited with Phillip Rivers. Let's go behind the scenes on that. So you're 14, man. How do you stay motivated? I think for me, I love to compete. You know, I love it. I still get excited to come in here and compete with the quarterbacks after practice or against our defense. We've got unfinished business, having not gotten to a Super Bowl, having not won one. So those team goals still drive you. But I think what sums it up for me is just the love to compete. I just can't imagine not competing. You still playing like a young man out there. Guys like you and Tom Brady playing as good as ever. How do you stay young? Yeah, I, I think some of it is they do protect us. And they do protect us, you know, so we're not taking some of the crazy hits. And then I, I'm learning, just being a young country boy from Alabama, you just think, hey, hey you eat and you run and you <laughs> right. play and you know, now I'm going, oh, shoot. Right. <laughs> at, at 35, it's like all those little diet things. Your diet has bit. changed a little bit, stretching a little more, which I've always hated to do. I didn't even know I had hamstrings until <laughs> a few years ago. And I was like, man, my hamstrings are so... the greatest of all time. <laughs> I just did my <laughs> just did your house. I'll never forget that one. <laughs> Three piece suit right there. Pants, coat, and vest. <laughs> when I was here, we got together at my house to play basketball. Yeah, yeah. I remember now, those days. Now, now so you guys playing basketball in here or do you do you got a place where you guys play? You got Well, a, I'm having to shut it down a little bit. I'm not, I'm like, All right. I may be in the forty and over league here when I retire. <laughs> But I just start thinking, gosh, if something crazy happens on that basketball court. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That's very true. Let's make a song. I just scored 10. Yeah, I got your 10. Oh, so it's my play? So it's your play. It's funny looking around this locker room, man. Nothing has changed, really. But the people, you know, locker room looks the same. You know, for us, during that time, playing dominoes, it was that camaraderie and that chemistry we built just around the domino table. No question. Because I think, too, in this profession, we're all in different stages of our life, right? I mean, yeah. I have my family and children. You were starting your young family at the time. But this was where you hung out. Yeah. And that, to me, is what I think I'll miss. I'm sure you that's I, I, you missed that part. Absolutely. Of the bus rides, your same seat, and us yeah. talking and laughing, all those things. That's that's what I think I appreciate more now as I've gotten older. Time flies. Yeah. You used to hear it. Yeah. You know, you won your MVP in 06 and the yeah. Russian titles, and you're, you're like, oh, he's a first battle friend. How many times did you hear him say that? You yeah, know what I did? I hear it. And then just hear you look up, and it's real. Players like yourself and guys who legitimately have a shot at the Hall of Fame. Does it ever cross your mind? I'd be not human to say you didn't hear it or go, golly, that's even crazy that somebody's mentioning it. But I don't think about it. Like, you know, what do I need to do to get there? Yeah. But this past year was really the first year. It was a tough season for us as a team, and I had some heartbreaking, terrible plays at the end of games and lost some games. But this year was the first time that it hit me, passing Elway 
uh, you know, in touchdowns. And it's just all of a sudden, just, just some of the guys that when I was six, seven, yeah. eight years old, I was going, guys, you know, they were they were, they were were my favorites. Yeah. Aikman and Elway and Favre and Payton, those guys' posters. Was, well, who was your favorite? Favre was probably my guy. I felt like I resonated a little bit with the way he played. He yeah. wasn't as orthodox. I think as I got in the NFL and the more time I've been able to spend with Payton and, and see him up close and play against him, he would be right there. Yeah. And he will always be one of my favorites. So probably those two guys. Yeah. Um, stand out the most. So you got to check him out. Yeah. Check him. <laughs> hey, you turn those dominoes over. You remember. You turn them over. You better say something. You better say something. <laughs> Antonio Brown with his son Otto out there before practice. Otto. All right. Coming up, we are asking this question. Is this division the Steelers to lose? And we have news from Baltimore on Colin Kaepernick. You want to hear it, don't go anywhere. Inside Training Camp Live. 